So welcome to everybody. I see Lori is there. If you're just joining us, I have two screens going, trying to keep an eye on both things, the Facebook Live to help answer questions, as well as right here. We have Michael, a wolf from Pack 454 in McMinnville. All right, and it is six o'clock, so we are going to get started. I know our new digital den leader is having a little technical difficulty getting her camera working. Matt, are you ready to go, though? I am all ready to go. Awesome. All right, well, welcome, Scouters, to our digital den meeting number two. We're still going to try and get Christy. I can see you. Don't go anywhere. Okay, I'm here. <laughs> You're there. <laughs> All right, so welcome everybody. This week we have disabled the chat. You can still privately message um, a host, a co-host, which would be Claire Osterman, Matt Winnett, Christy Sloan, or myself, and we will try to respond to those messages. On Facebook, you can just go ahead and type it in the chat for those of you that are watching there. This is all a learning process again, so we appreciate everybody's patience. And again, we appreciate all the tips that everybody you can has just watch with. on your iPad. We would like to introduce Eli and Mason from PAC 690 and Troop 799 here in Cascade Pacific Council. Will the audience please rise, place your hand, place your hand over your heart or scout hand salute. Please join us in the Pledge of Allegiance. Go. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. On my honor, I will do my best to do my duty to guide my country and to obey the Scout Law, to help other people at all times, to keep myself physically strong, mentally awake, and morally straight. A Scout is trustworthy, loyal, helpful, friendly, courteous, kind, obedient, cheerful, thrifty, brave, clean, and reverent. Two. All right. So again, welcome everybody. My name is Jenny Hickey. I am your digital cub master for these digital den meeting series and I work for Cascade Pacific Council with growth and relationships. And my name is Matt Winnett. I also work in growth and relationships here at the Cascade Pacific Council um, and I will be one of your digital den leaders tonight. Hi, I don't know if you can see me or not. I'm the one with technical difficulties. I'm Christy Sloan, and a membership assistant at uh, Cascade Pacific Council. And uh, I don't see my, I guess I'm up there, huh? Okay. Um, I'm on my son's iPad because I logged in. Anyway, long story. So welcome everybody. And we're, we're all in here together. So welcome. Thank you. I'm a digital den leader here tonight. Thank you, Christy. Um, we are all learning this together and I feel like every single day we learn more. So um, thank you, Christy, for your patience with our technical difficulties tonight. I'm Claire Osterman and I'm our Assistant Director of Field Service at Cascade Pacific Council. And I'm also the digital committee chair for our digital den meetings. Okay, so which one's mine? I'm attending and I'm your digital vendor. <laughs> and in case you didn't hear, that's Mackenzie. She's our digital dinner and she is a bear. <laughs> Hi, 
All right. Well, let's see. Let's get started. So this is our agenda for the day. Um, <clears throat> this week, our digital den meeting is going to focus on the gardening activity. Um, we're going to hear from a couple of people about ways to garden and why gardening is important. Uh, we're also going to meet Claire's gardening project, Plant Jelena Grow Lee. We'll hear from Jackie Dana Miller about what gardening is, uh, growing zones, plants in the Pacific Northwest, that's the Portland area here, um, and why it's so important to garden. Uh, and then Christy and I are going to talk about the outdoor code, what the outdoor code means, and uh, leave no trace principles, and what it means to leave no trace when you're camping and hiking. After that, uh, we're going to go over the six essential items to bring on an adventure, uh, and that will be with Calvin. Before any of that happens, though, Jenny, uh, I think you should help us check in on our computer virus activity from last week. Yes, thank you, Matt. Does everybody have their bread from last week? Have you been able to see anything on your bread? This is my bread. Now, we got a lot of Facebook feedback, and I think that a lot of ours didn't do much. Um, so your piece of bread might be different. It may have grown some mold. We have some in the chat or in the presentation that did grow some. Just because you don't have any mold on it yet though, doesn't mean it won't be there. Just like this piece of bread, sometimes it can take a long time for us to know that there is a virus on our computer, but it could still be there even though you don't know it. That's why it's important to always be good, safe, digital citizens, and when you're on the internet. A virus can infect your computer and make it run slower. They can steal personal information, and that is not good for anybody. For those that didn't have any mold grow on your bread, I see in the chat one of them says, that's mine, the third one. So probably that one right there, kind of up closer to the text, we have that viewer on there. Their bread did grow something and Zachary, his bread grew a little bit. We tried to make it come up bigger for you. But Claire, can you go to the next slide so we can show them a quick video of the molding process and what will probably happen to their bread if they just give it a little bit longer. I think all of our hands are so clean right now that it didn't do anything. As you can see, that computer or the bread didn't look too good after a few weeks. So watch your bread, see if it grows anything, and have fun with it. But make sure you throw it away at the end and do not download unknown files from the internet. Next up, I get to start talking about plants with everybody by introducing to you Plant Jelena Groly. Plantulina is my chia pet, and I decided to start my chia pet when I had to start staying home 12 days ago as something to pass the time and as something to get excited about um, and to really enjoy every single day. And plants always make me feel happy, so I was super excited to be able to start this project. So as you can see, Plantulina started off as just a little terracotta unicorn, and I had to add seeds to the outside of Plantulina. They were chia seeds, and then I watered Plant Jelena, and as the chia seeds got more and more water, they started to grow, and they grow very quickly, so it's really fun to watch this project. Um, so I only started, you know, maybe 12 days ago or so, and she has already sprouted, and here is Plant Jelena. She's in the meeting with me. <laughs> so it's a lot of fun to grow things, and I'm really excited we get to talk about growing plants at this week's den meeting. 
Thanks for letting me share Plant Jolino with everyone. <laughs> Thank you, Claire. To share a little bit more about plants and gardening, we have one of our awesome volunteers, Jackie Dana Miller, with us today. Jackie, are you there? We might have to unmute her. We're learning. I will click unmute Jackie, our guest. Unmute myself. Okay. Hello, Jackie. Hi, everybody. Can you hear me now? We can hear you. Hey, good job. You might want to switch the slides, but hey, there you go. Hi, I'm Jackie Dana Miller, um, and I'm a teacher. I teach at a high school locally, and I've been, uh, I have a master's degree in horticulture. So, hey, I love gardening. It's a great way to get outside. So today we're going to cover basically um, gardening. It can cover different. Uh, I'm not sure how to say it because I saw we had bears, we have weevilos, but um, today we're mostly um, addressing some uh, Cub Scout adventures, how to grow something and ready, set, grow. So the first thing we're going to talk about is uh, growing zones. So uh, this is more, uh, there you go, thank you. I know some of you are not from Oregon, but that's okay. Um, we're going to talk about uh, the growing zones in Portland, Oregon. Portland falls into the hardiness zone of 8B. Um, and for most parts uh, close to Portland, we call it the Willamette Valley, and that's where I live. And um, that's more of a zone 6. But if you guys are from other areas of Oregon or other states, you can go to your local nursery and they will tell you um, what, what type of plants will grow best in your area. Or if you're at home, you can go online and Google it, type in the city and the state and you will come up with your own growing zone. So it's kind of a cool thing to do. So when we talk about growing zones, what are they? Well, there's a hardiness zone, meaning how hardy is that plant going to be when it grows, or the area or zone that is based on how cold it gets in your area. So plants in that category, or one of, will have a number and a zone, like a number and a, um, like ours is 8B, so a letter. And um, you can find out all this information online or go to your local um, garden center. So at this time, let's see, where am I? There are many full length video tours online that you can look on YouTube, um, check with your parents first when you go online. And there's lots and lots of uh, videos you can watch about gardening, landscapes, um, really cool places to visit. And so at this time, we're gonna show you um, a really neat Japanese garden that's here in Portland, Oregon. So uh, we're going to take time and watch this for a bit, and, um, and then we'll talk about it. Thanks. The garden speaks to all the senses, not just to the mind alone. Welcome to the Portland Japanese Garden. In Japanese gardens, everything you see is intentional. Consider this along your stroll today. Notice each plant placement and how the paths change and guide your experience. A Japanese garden isn't meant to evoke strong emotions, but rather quiet reflection. For this reason, we ask that you quiet your voice while in the garden. As you walk through our garden, you will notice seasonal elements that offer a grounded sense of place in nature, like the lush greenery of summer, vibrant hues of fall, or the smell of fresh rain on the delicate moss in the winter. Every season offers something special. This is a place where anyone, for any time, increasingly, uh, today's day and age, very few places like this, where um, you can experience the same thing in the same way. So you just like, come back and again and again. Right? And you see the gardens are living things. Inspired in the late 1950s to renew cultural ties between Oregon and Japan, 
Members of the Portland community conceived the idea of building the Portland Japanese Garden on the site of the old zoo in Washington Park. It was really about healing the wounds of the war, uh, about coming together and saying, hey, um, it's not what it was 20 years ago uh, when we were great enemies. 55 years later, uh, we've grown to be perhaps the largest Japanese culture center in the world, uh, all out of that, that nugget of an idea that, that out of war comes peace and mutual understanding uh, and through a garden. It's an incredible thing. Just beyond the Nezu Gate are the five original gardens, each showcasing a unique style. This is not typical in Japan, but consistent with the original purpose of this garden, to teach our guests about Japanese culture. The strolling pond garden consists of the upper and lower ponds connected by a flowing stream. The upper pond features the iconic moon bridge, while the lower pond has a zigzag bridge, which weaves through beds of Japanese iris against the backdrop of the stunning Heavenly Falls. The tea garden is a place for quiet reflection on beauty and nature, as well as the art of living in harmony with one another. This garden is housed within the strolling pond garden and weaves through a roji path to an authentic tea house. The third garden style is the natural garden. It also has meandering pathways created to encourage you to rest and immerse yourself in nature. Stay along the stone pathways to admire and protect the moss. Our natural garden is uh, the most naturalistic feeling of the garden, and that's probably why I love it, because it's the closest to feeling as if I'm in a native forest, but in fact, all the trees are kept at a certain proportion to, to truly feel, um, you know, comforting rather than overwhelming. There are two raked gravel gardens at the Portland Japanese Garden, which are meant to be viewed from the sidelines. The first, the sand and stone garden, features the stark simplicity of weathered stones rising from a bed of sand raked to suggest the sea. Our flat garden was carefully designed to highlight the distinctive beauty of all four seasons. Our gravel gardens are delicate and are not meant to be walked on. Within the flat garden is our pavilion gallery, which showcases Japanese art exhibitions. In 2017, the Portland Japanese Garden opened its cultural village, adding three new garden spaces, including the Ellie M. Hill Bonsai Terrace, which gives visitors a chance to see many varieties of bonsai examples and techniques throughout the seasons. The buildings, designed by world-renowned Japanese architect Kengo Kuma, are structured to easily transition your site from nature to architecture, using thin green roofs, Oregon timber, and glass walls to keep the nearby scenery always in view. The addition includes a 20-foot castle wall made using a traditional dry stack technique, and the Umami Cafe, which offers an array of authentic tea and snacks for you to enjoy while gazing out at the native Douglas fir trees. With these new spaces, the garden strives to provide more opportunities to learn about Japanese culture. There are often exhibitions and demonstrations in the Jordan Schnitzer Japanese Arts Learning Center. Ask the concierge for more details. To help us create the best experience for yourself and for everyone who enters our gates, please do not talk on your cell phone while in the garden, and please don't walk on the delicate moss or in the raked gravel gardens. Enjoy your food and beverages before visiting, and please keep your voices in a quiet conversational tone. Stroll around, slow down, and let your senses guide you into another world. Wow, wasn't that cool? There are many plants that grow in the Portland and surrounding areas. And there's also lots of vegetables you can grow like carrots and peas and pumpkins, cucumbers, tomatoes, radishes, strawberries, and more. I'm pretty sure in your area, you will find many types of plants that are similar that grow here, like evergreens. Here they're called Douglas firs and it's the common Christmas tree. Another plant I saw in the, the virtual garden was, um, 
blooming like cherry trees. I'm sure back in Maryland, you have some beautiful ones um, right now. In the springtime, you have blooming trees and they have pretty little pink flowers and white buds and they're gorgeous. So, um, there are gardens everywhere. Even the happiest place on earth is Disneyland. And, and if you, um, or, I'm not sure if we're showing this video or um, if you, yeah, okay, sorry. I think um, this is a great one about Disneyland. Disneyland has beautiful gardens and um, adults and children alike love it. And this is a quick little one minute video that will show you what um, professional gardeners can do with their gardens for you. We're backstage of Disneyland. This is what we call the Disneyland nursery. We're standing in our shade house. This is where all of our shady plants kind of get a little bit of protection from the sun. This is where we bring all of our plants in. The day they're delivered, a lot of them are actually planted that very day. You know, Main Street's one of the biggest crews because it's a pretty big place and we have the most flowers on Main Street of anywhere in the whole park. Every morning, they're just powering through to make sure everything's perfect and just looking fresh every single day. A big part of Disney is the flowers. Like, you know, every section tells a story. So I believe when we put new flowers in, take the old out, there's always something being told. I mean, I love it. Springtime is a wonderful time to be here because we have flowering trees like at the hub, those beautiful pink tababuyas are coming into flower right now even. You know, so you get this beautiful show in the sky. So with the 60th Diamond Celebration, you're gonna see a lot of blues and silvers and whites incorporated into the park. You're gonna see a lot of old fashioned flowers as well as all of our regular spring colors. And one of the things you'll notice this year at, for example, Partner Statue, it's a Zanetti called Sparkle Blue. It's a multicolor blue. It's kind of dark and it's got a little bit of light in it, but it looks just like the colors in the castle. It's a wonderful time to enjoy this vast array of beauty out there. Very cool. So two of the plants you need to learn about, in addition to what I talked about, trees. Um, in the video, we looked at pansies. They're really pretty flowers and you usually see them planted during the springtime and they come in many colors. They go in container gardens, which we're gonna talk, uh, you talk a little bit about with this requirement. And they're the ones with the little faces on them. So if you ever see this when you're out and about or um, maybe your parents have a, a container garden on their porch, things like that, you'll see the pansies. They're very colorful. And then the next one is uh, begonias. And those are all, there's so many different types and they're pretty, you'll see them at your local garden center. Um, they're great for, they call them bedding plants. So you put them in your landscape or you could put them in containers or even just keep them in like a, a little tiny four inch pot. And they're very beautiful. So this is more for the younger set, but actually anybody can learn this stuff about gardening. There's so many different ways to have a miniature garden or a huge garden in your backyard. Um, you can actually grow things and anything that will hold um, some soil and water as like this picture, we have like a Tonka truck, we have rain boots, and then we have like little terrariums that you guys will be looking at. Um, in your own den meetings and it's a lot of fun i've seen uh, if you attend the local fair you'll see a lot of different types of containers that are used and um let's see what else you'll see a lot of uh holiday time you'll see poinsettias and uh little miniature gardens that people give for gifts and so really you only need really some basic skills to learn how to work a garden um and i think i have a slide for that too but um uh Sorry, we're gonna talk about greenhouses. Greenhouses is just that. It's a little glass house or a plastic house that um, keeps the warmth in to grow plants. And down here lower, at the lower part of the slide, you'll see different varieties. Maybe some of you might have a, uh, a terrarium or a glass uh, bowl container with little mixed plants in it. Maybe you're in school and you guys um, have a science classroom or you have a little science area and there's an aquarium and those are often used for um, indoor plants. 
So they're great little structures that keep the climate even. So if you live in an area where it snows, your plants um, can survive and stay warm. Um, there are some things you can do right now. I know some of us are staying at home and uh, hanging out during spring break or there's no school, but these are some things you could do at home to enjoy gardening and helping your parents out. You could rake leaves, you could pull weeds, you could water plants for them, you could sweep the sidewalk or patio, um, you could plant, uh, start your vegetable garden. Um, it's a little early right now to put vegetables outside because usually you wait till after May when the last snow. Um, you can keep your areas around your home um, litter free. And then also uh, you can help take care of plants inside your house. You can ask your parents if you could help water them or maybe they have some dead uh, leaves or something you can remove and with their help you can help them um, enjoy a nice uh, garden inside their house. Um, and this is really another requirement for the younger set, but actually all of you need to know that food um, that we eat comes from many places in different countries. The food we eat come from animals, including like beef, veal, lamb, pork, fish, and chicken. And then there's other foods that come from plants like rice, wheat, fruit, beans, and vegetables. And then we also eat food that animals um, make. So like we drink milk, or maybe chickens have eggs. And so we um, have those products also. And also there's a lot of times the animals that um, we uh, eat, they also um, eat like grass and wheat and things like that. So it's a really cool cycle to know where your food comes from. And gardening's a big part of it. You could grow your own food. You can even grow something in your kitchen or in your house for herbs and uh, maybe a tomato plant for some fresh tomatoes. Oh, and this is a great video on how to plant your small container garden. And um, we'll watch it, right? Thanks. <laughs> Hello and welcome to In the Kitchen with Matt. I'm your host, Matt Taylor. Today we are not in my kitchen, we are on my patio. And I'm gonna to talk to you about container gardening. I really like to garden. It's something that I enjoy. It's relaxing, it's fun, it's rewarding. It's actually kind of magical to take a little seed and put it in some dirt, throw some water on it after a couple months. And you got this plant you can eat. It's pretty cool. Um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you my garden, give you a couple of tips of what you can do to grow your own container garden, and we'll go from there. Here we have a cucumber, radishes, onion, mesculin, lettuce, carrots, green onion, kale. Kale, lettuce, radishes, carrots. And now for a few tips on container gardening, things that I've picked up along the way. One is you need to have the right size container for the plant. I, uh, I made a mistake, I, plant, I planted tomatoes in a uh, one of these small uh, three gallon, two and a half gallon uh, Home Depot uh, containers and they just did not do well. Make sure you have the right size container. For something like tomatoes or cucumbers, use a five gallon bucket. Those work great and they're cheap. Three bucks at Home Depot, can't go wrong. Uh, small containers like this that aren't very deep, they work well for lettuce, uh, green onion, kale, carrots, things of that nature work, work great. You have to have plenty of sunlight. My garden is on the west side, which means I'm pretty limited to the light I get I get. If I'm lucky, six hours, which is pretty much what you need, six hours or more. So I'm right there on the cusp of the sunlight. One thing you need to make sure is have proper drainage. So drill holes in the bottom of your containers if they don't come with it. And that will allow the soil to drain really well. Uh, make sure to keep the ground moist. Uh, containers tend to dry out a lot quicker than normal ground, so make sure to keep them moist. In the summertime here in Arizona, it's really hot. I was watering twice a day and that worked fine. Um, now in the fall, I 
water once a day or once every other day, and that seems to do the trick. Use a good potting mix. You can get them at any garden center. Pick the right uh, seeds uh, for your season, and you should be just fine. It's really easy to take care, take care of your garden, and uh, you don't have to worry about weeds very much. That's, that's a big plus. So you have no excuse. If you have a small space, contain your garden all the way, and you'll have fun. You'll enjoy the fruits or vegetables of your labors. And uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in, and hope you enjoy your garden. Jackie might be muted. Let's see if we can get her unmuted here. Great. So at this time, um, are we uh, opening up for discussion or they just think about it, then later they'll talk about it too? Yeah, at the end they can, if we have time, we'll okay. cover a couple questions or they okay. can talk about it with their families. And then scouts, you can go online using all your new cyber chip skills to browse safely with your trusted adult and learn more. There you or go. Or you can get in touch, you can watch the recording and emails will be on there also. Great, thank you. Thank you so much, Jackie, for doing this for us and helping tonight. All right, yeah, thanks, Jackie. Um, now we're gonna talk about the outdoor code and what leave no trace means. Uh, but we're going to start with the outdoor code and we're going to start with a quick video uh, on the outdoor code. As an American, I will do my best to be clean in my outdoor manners, to be careful with fire, to be considerate in the outdoors, and to be conservation minded. All right. Okay, so scouts, let's all say the outdoor code together. Everyone, repeat after me. As an American. As an American. I will do my best to. I will do, I will my, do best. my best to. Be clean in my outdoor manners. Be clean, clean in, in my, my outdoor, outdoor manners. manners. Be careful with fire. Be careful, be careful with fire. With fire. Be considerate in the outdoors. Be, be considerate, considerate in, in the, the outdoors. outdoors. And be conservation minded. And be conservation, be conservation minded. minded. Sweet. Now Jenny's going to lead us in an activity to learn what that means. Thanks, Christy. So does everybody have their paper and a pencil or pen? We'll give you about 15 seconds to go grab one. Also, thank you for the tip if you're watching for the person who suggested adding the materials beforehand to that opening slide. Hopefully everybody's had a chance to grab this. All right, so you just learned about the outdoor code. What I want you to do now is draw the outdoor code. So take your paper, you are going to take your marker, and you guys can do this when it's sitting down. The first step is to divide this into four sections. Your sections might have straighter lines than mine. So that is your first. Sorry, technical difficulties. Video got stopped there for a minute. All right, just again to recap, here is what the paper should look like. Trying to make sure it's visible. Just four sections. Then you can take and put one, two, three, and four in each section. And in the first section, hopefully everybody has had a chance to get those numbers down, I want everyone to draw 
what you think being clean in your outdoor manners means. We'll give you about a minute and a half to talk about this with your trusted adult that's with you and so you can draw your picture. I see a few private messages about opening the open chat up. We will open the chat up to everybody at the end of our meeting for just a few minutes. We just have it closed so that we can kind of stay on topic. Most of you Cub Scouts did a great job last week and we're very appreciative of that. We just want to be able to focus on the den meeting though. All right, for the second portion or section, I want you to draw how you can be careful with fire. And we'll give you about a minute and a half again for that. I see a question about the video now. Um, also, we're trying just to kind of follow some more youth protection rules and not have as many videos going all at once when we're doing the presentation. That way then we can monitor things a little bit more. Maybe we can open up the fun video where it's like a grid at the end. We can always discuss that with the team for next week. Or maybe we'll surprise you and do it at the end this week too. We'll see. All right, for section number three, that's going to be down here. I want you to draw now what it is, be considerate in the outdoors, what that means to you. All right, and then for section number four, I apologize, I wasn't keeping a timer. Hopefully it's been long enough. I want you to draw, be conservation minded. What does that mean to you? Okay, so is there anybody who would like to share what they got in section number one? Real quick. Oliver would. All right, we're going to try something, Oliver. We're going to unmute you and give you about 10 seconds to share what you drew in section number one. Remember to use good digital citizenship when you do this. 
Okay, Oliver, can you hear us and talk? Yes. All right, what do you have for section one? Um, my, I think when you guys stopped my camera. Oh, we can turn that on for you real quick too, buddy. Just a second. We're all learning this together. All right, there you go, Oliver. I, what I do, it's kind of backwards right here. Um, I did, there was a person who found some trash on the ground. They, pick it, they picked it up and then there was a trash can and they put it in there and each one is a different step that they did. Awesome, great job, Oliver. I'm gonna go ahead and mute you now. Great job on that. That is exactly what could have went there in number one. Great job. Thank you. All great. right. And uh, from, our, from our Facebook Live, we have Stephanie who says, Aiden says no littering. So thanks, Aiden. Yep, and that just, yep, reinforces what Oliver had shared with us. All right, so for number two, do we have another Cub Scout who wants to share real fast? Diana's family. Okay, we'll go ahead and share yours real fast. I can't see you on my participant list. Oh, there, you're using the raise hand feature. Look at that. All right, you are unmuted and your video should start. For number three, if you number see, two, okay. two I, I said that you should keep a good distance away from fire. Yeah. That's good. Yep, you wanna keep a good distance from fire. For mine, I also added in the, um, that you want to have water nearby also. Okay, and then we're going to go ahead just to speed things up again. We love that scouts are wanting to share. We're going to try to bring that feature in a little bit more next time. Matt, do you want to share what you got for number three? Yeah, so uh, my pen died, um, so I don't have a good drawing for number three. Um, but what I was going to draw was uh, someone putting their trash back into their backpack on a hike after their lunch break. Uh, but it's hard to do that without a pen that works. <laughs> Definitely is. And Christy or Claire, do you want to share number four, what you drew? And then we'll go into our Leave No Trace lessons. We also have someone who's begging in the chat. Let's open that chat for someone, maybe. Okay. Um, on the Facebook, it says Aiden says don't play with matches. I think that was for the third one. Thank you, Aiden. All right, and I am unmuting and giving video access to one more family. It looks like maybe two or three scouts. Can you guys hear us, Anna, Catherine, and I don't know how to say the first name. Focus in. We can hear you, but we uh, don't have video yet. Share oh. my video. Okay, we got to click on that. Hold on a second. <laughs> We're all go. learning together. There we go. Okay. Scoop, so your sister can be in. Anna, you ready? Hello. Yeah. Show, share one of your pictures. Can we see number four? Number four. I do. Mine has no arms because I haven't finished it yet. <laughs> what are doing? So, Kaisa is basically drawing a person and it's not finished yet. I finished. But, uh, what? So you guys can always finish them later. It's a pretty. It's a person putting their trash back into into their backpack while they're hiking. Good job. Awesome. Thank you for sharing, Cub Scouts. We're gonna go ahead and turn your stuff off now, and then get back to our meeting. Thank you to all our Scouts that shared. Matt, take it away. All right. Thanks, Jenny. So now that we've learned about the outdoor code, um, we're gonna learn about leave no trace and what it means. There are seven parts to the leave no trace policy, seven points, and we're gonna watch a quick video that'll show us some hand signs for each of the seven points to kind of help us remember them. 
Um, and then we're going to talk about what each of those points means. Let's see if the video will come up. We'll watch the video. Um, oh, there it is. Nope, the video disappeared. Technical difficulty, everybody. We'll get that video back up. So we'll watch the video through once, and then I think we'll watch it one more time. Uh, so try and pay attention and, and watch those hand motions, and then we'll try and figure it out. See if we can all do it for the second time we watch it. We'll all do it together. Before you go. go. Number two. Choose the right path. Number three. Crash your trash. Number four. Leave what you find. Number five. Be careful with time. Respect wildlife. Number seven. Let's see. So Claire, do we want to go back and watch that one more time or do we want to keep pushing on so that everybody can get in? Let's and do it push together. on, Matt. Let's push on. Let's push on. All right. So how about this? While we hit each point, well, everybody do your hand motion at home. So the first part of the leave no trace policy is no before you go. Uh, this means to be prepared, right? Scouting is all about being prepared. So you need to bring clothes to protect you from the cold or heat or the rain uh, and make sure you use a map and learn about where you're going before you go. Awesome. So uh, Matt said, use maps and learn about the area before you visit. The second point is choose the right path. This means you should always choose to do, always do our best to walk on the marked paths uh, when we're taking our adventures. Walking off the trail can damage the plants and things growing where you walk. So um, you should also camp at least 100 feet from, and that's about 100 big steps from roads, trails, and water. Matt? Yeah, so the third point, trash your trash. Uh, this means any trash that you take with you, you should take out with you when, you, um, when you're done. So pack it in, pack it out, right? That means that stuff like candy bar wrappers and plastic bags should be taken with you um, when, you're, when you're on a hike and then throw those away in a trash can instead of leaving them on the trail. All right. So for the fourth point, leave what you find. So you shouldn't take things that you find on the trail when you're camping or hiking. Uh, things like rocks and plants and cool sticks should be on the trail and you should leave them there. Yeah. All right. Now, point number five, be careful with fire. This one's pretty simple. Uh, if you have a campfire or a stove to cook your food, if you're camping, you should be very careful. Um, and make sure your fire is completely out when you're done with it. Fire is pretty dangerous, and if you're not careful, you can start a forest fire. I think we can all agree that a forest fire is not something that we want to start. Right. Point number six is respect wildlife. Never approach or feed the animal. If we go on a hike in the woods, we are hiking in their home and we should be respectful. Exactly. And point number seven, the last point is be kind to other visitors, right? Uh, when you go hiking or camping, we probably aren't going to be the only people there, right? As scouts, we should be respectful, just like every day, right? We should be respectful to the other people who are hiking and camping at the same time as us. 
So those are the seven points of the leave no trace policy. It's important that we follow all of those points whenever we go hiking or camping. Uh, that's so that you know, we can continue to enjoy all the cool places we visit for a long time. Thanks, Matt, for sharing and Christy about the seven, sorry, the leave no trace seven principles. I, I drew a blank there for a minute. Um, so here to reinforce that and kind of give the kids a visual, here is an empty park scene. This is a typical park, maybe at the beginning of a beautiful summer. There's open grassy fields, so a uh, hardened parking area so you can easily bring your cooler with some snacks and sandwiches and even a river so you can head swimming if you'd like. While it is great for there to be public lands for us to use, with so many people using them, we all need to take action to keep them beautiful. Let's see how this field starts looking through the summer. You can see it is, well, we'll say maybe middle of summer, and everyone has come to enjoy the beautiful park that is there. There are children playing and people are visiting. So what can happen if all of these people show up and don't do their part to keep it nice? What kind of impacts can occur? At this next slide that just popped up, you'll see. Think about what happens when even more people have come. You can see there is now litter all around the park. There's some brown spots that people have maybe sat too long, or maybe they set up a tent and didn't move it. The potential for recreation related impacts can increase significantly when multiple people begin using something. It also means, while it's great so many people can spend time outside, it also means that there are many opportunities to impact the outdoors. Recreation-related impacts to our public lands are individual, but they do add up over time. So as Cub Scouts and Scouters, it's important that we all do our part to keep our parks and our lands beautiful so we can use them for years to come. And now to share about the Cub Scout Six Essentials is our digital den chief, Calvin. And he will cover these just very briefly. Scouts, you can talk more about these with your parents at home. Hi, my name is Calvin Hickey. I'm in the Cascade Pacific Council. We are, I'm talking about the six essentials. You'll be needing trail food in case you get lost or if you're hungry on the trail. So I have a meat stick and a bag of Cheerios. You need water. In case you get dehydrated, you need light in case you're walking to the, when you're walking for when you're walking to the fire or if you're lost, get lost. You have a safety whistle, which if you get lost, make sure you stop right in that place and blow it three times. I have a med kit with antibiotic burn cream, band-aids, and gauze. Uh, all three of those things are important. So if you ever get hurt, you can patch yourself up real quick. Okay, that's it. Oh, and you have sun protection with the hat and sunblock. Awesome. Well, thanks to everybody for joining us for our second Digital Den meeting. Um, and thanks, Eli and Mason, for leading us in the Pledge of Allegiance, Scout Oath, and the Scout Law. Uh, this concludes our meeting. We hope to see you again next week for another awesome DEN meeting. Um, and again, if you want to get involved next week or with a future meeting, send us your skit, your song, your activity. You know, we'd love to get them. Uh, and if anybody has any questions, email any of us. Our emails are all listed there on the screen now. Uh, Thanks again for joining us, and we'll see you next week. Bye. Jenny, what are you working on this Friday, for this Friday? That's right. Thank you, Christy. Uh, so this Friday, everybody, before we go, in case you haven't seen the posts floating around Facebook, I am working on putting together a digital campfire, and I have a great team with us. Matt and Christy have been great support with that, and Claire and all of the staff at the council when I kind of brought this crazy idea to them. 
So we're very excited for it. Please join us. There's a Facebook link set up. There will be a Zoom meeting, but now that we learned this new trick about streaming to Facebook, we will stream it there also. We have a campfire master who will be live streaming Yay. a campfire for us from his backyard. He's very excited. We have a skit that brought tears to my eyes and I'm keeping it secret from everybody. Um, I'm very excited to share that one and it was very nice to get that in my email last night before bed. And so we hope everybody can join us for the campfire. If you have a skit you would like to submit or a song, or maybe you wanna be on the Zoom and lead a song during the meeting live, that would be awesome too. And we can play around and work it out. We're all learning this technology together, right? So go ahead and email us. There's a drive you can upload to, or like I said, just email it to one of us. Can I do a skit for the campfire? Yes, so the campfire, everybody, is again Friday night. We would love those skits and videos submitted by tomorrow night. We'll be doing one final check on Friday morning to see if there's any last minute submissions. I know that's pushing it really close to the campfire, but we wanna make sure our families have a chance to think of something creative and get a skit or song recorded. Awesome. Oh, and thank you for that comment, Olga. Thank you. Awesome. And I just want to say thank you to everybody who tuned in on Facebook Live. It seemed like it worked super well. So I'm really glad we were able to yeah. do that. We won't be able, or we won't have to limit any of our meetings to 300 people. Um, and then just a huge thank you to the whole team, Jenny, Matt, Christy, um, they're just working so hard to bring scouting to everyone. And thank you to all the scouts who continue to tune in every single week. You guys are doing a great job. Bye everyone. Bye, and on everyone. our Facebook, we'll see you um, next week and we Friday. have uh, Stephanie asking, um, what time is our, our campfire? It's at 7 p.m. on Friday, so you'll be able to join us through Zoom or um, through our Facebook Live group. All right, thanks again. We'll be checking the Facebook tomorrow and tonight maybe, so definitely leave us your comments and feedback. Thank you, everyone. Have a great night. It's this Friday, two days from now. <laughs>